This is a really good therapeutic uh, room for me to come into. You know, all these are just the memories, the good memories. Uh, for me, it's really powerful now and very therapeutic to come in here um, and sit and, you know, do some work on some other things and just kind of look around, you know, and remember. Because uh, now more than anything, you need those memories. Uh, you know, it's tough you know, when the brain's going. A lot of people have that perception of the things I've done and said that uh, I hate football, you know. I mean, uh, I have been probably the biggest advocate for football. Uh, <laughs> I'm looking for solutions to be able to pass this down to my son and how we can help make it better. People keep asking, would I do it again? Uh, I'd go back in a heartbeat to do it again. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. You know, uh, the one thing I do miss was just going out and... Fucking people up? Fucking people yeah, up. me too, buddy. I really didn't care about the money, all the other bullshit. I didn't really care about the running out, hearing the crowd. I never heard them anyway. For some reason, uh, maybe I don't think it bothered me the same way, or maybe I did enough stuff on the front end in terms of, you know, nutrition, training. I learned that nobody was going to look out for me pretty early in my NFL career. But that's the problem. I mean, the problem is, is that there's so many of us uh, that are having these same issues, you know, myself included, you know. And you're the only guy that hasn't. And I can say that the, uh, the only difference was just in what I saw in how you did take care of your body. And for me, that's, that's the real thing of why, uh, you know, I believe cannabis can help uh, the total body, but for me, it's about the mind. Like, my knowledge of marijuana is nothing. But what, what I'm interested in is uh, this idea of strength. My deal is, with the marijuana, there needs to be testing. And you know what? If you are going to make uh, painkillers, anti-inflammatories, all these other things available to players, it's, it's hypocritical. The NFL is pathetic. And when you played in the National Football League and had the opportunity to see behind the curtain, um, and understand what it is uh, is happening and how this league is being run by very scared, uh, ignorant individuals. Um, it's very frustrating. We'll continue to follow the medicine. Our experts right now are not indicating that we should change our policy in any way. So I don't see any change in the near future. I think when someone says follow the science, they're full of shit. The science is already there. That's, that's just saying, I don't want to look at it now. That's probably the easy scapegoat. So we need to let the guys in white lab coats work on this for another 10 years, and I'm going to hide behind that excuse for as long as I can. They're going to wait for the FDA trial. Um, it's too late. You're going to have too many, too many guys that, uh, that'll end up with PTSD or CTE and commit suicide. and, and uh, um, there's no reason to wait. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. We looked at the levels of one of the endocannabinoids after brain trauma in, in mice. And we saw that one of the endocannabinoids, the 2-AG, goes up nearly tenfold uh, after uh, brain trauma. We strongly believe that these compounds are neuroprotective. Now, why this has not advanced to clinical trials, I have no idea.
We have a, a very serious problem in our football community, you know, sports community in general. I'm personally trying to vie for clinical trials in, in football players and that we have this brain disease that leads to Alzheimer's and dementia and all of these horrific things that nothing has addressed this injury better than cannabis. Quite a few years ago, we showed in animals, for some peculiar reasons, it's a little bit difficult to do an experiment with a human to give him a uh, something on the head and said, let's see what it works. Right. Well, we, we called it practice. <laughs> yeah, uh, we caused a relatively light damage to the brain of mice, and uh, we uh, administered them one of the endogenous cannabinoids, one of those compounds that we produce ourselves, 2-AG. And we found that we could reduce by 50% the damage that was done. And it was published in the major journal of science of nature. So it's not unavailable, it's there. So here we have strong data showing that a cannabis type compound helps. Once we showed quite a few years ago that 2-AG helps, it should have been done uh, in humans in a clinical trial and yet, 2-AG has never been administered to a human. Chances are that uh, concussions can be treated with the 2-AG, which is a cannabis that we produce. Sure. It's not a plant that people can say, who knows what the effects of the... This is something that we produce. You know, we know it's not toxic. It has never, never been administered to a human. Uh, uh, I can't explain exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> I can't explain it. Exactly. And uh, it should be done. It urges me to go further. It urges me to push more. Because if we have to wait, then nothing's going to happen. And you can't have certain things wait. You hear so many stories of people saying, well, I had this strain and it worked. And then I went to the store a month later and it was labeled the same thing, but it didn't work. Why is that? Well, it's probably not the same strain, actually. Uh, there isn't a really ironclad nomenclature system in the field. That's what we're trying to do here, is to change that, is to genetically sequence all of these strains, build a huge genetic database of what strain is what, and track that throughout time. You've got this one running? All right. Every person's, in fact, very different. Uh, so when people say THC gets everybody high, well, no, that's not true, actually. Um, you know, we, we all differ by um, probably four to five million variants in our genome alone. That means we all get have different responses. And there are studies that show this, and unlike children with severe epilepsy, they look as if they're complete zombies, and you put them on CBD, and suddenly they're now awake and conscious, and they're having conversations with their parents. So you have to ask, are they high? Uh, or are they just r r pushing their, more, their neurotransmitters back to baseline? Um, I think it's the latter. The NFL is a very conservative sport. Here's this substance that could help. It's everything from Parkinson's to seizures, a, a litany of medical issues that people are now looking at marijuana as a possible, if not cure, at least management device. And the NFL is refusing it. And the players I've talked to have said, we don't understand this at all. This is an instance where we will have to humanize the people and tell more of these stories for it to really inject itself into the American consciousness. What's up? What's happening, man? Nice yeah, this good to see you, man. Yeah, good yeah. to see you. You're a big Great old dude. Hey, man, we had to protect you guys. <laughs> <laughs> My dad, Marv. Hey. Marv, how you doing, Kyle. sir? Great to meet you. Hey. you? Yeah, okay, I'll stay great in here. to meet you. See. Thank you. Uh -huh. Yeah, he was saying you're having some luck with some CBD products. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. This is, I just got for <laughs> Marv, but uh, I tried it before I give, gave it to him because mm -hmm. there's no, it's all CBD. We went to Hawaii together. Yeah. And my buddy Eric lives over there. And I took uh, all of his medication, which was like I needed a separate bag for. Mm -hmm. It was that 
the quantity. Yeah. And when I showed up, he had these little pens. The vape pens? Yeah. yeah. And it was uh, CBD with the THC mm -hmm. combination. Mm -hmm. And I didn't give him a pill for the seven days he was there and there was no sleep problems, there was no anxiety. I mean, when yeah. I would see the anxiety kind of come on, I would just hit him, give him a pen. Yeah. And he's never smoked in his life. Yeah. I mean, I, I've found a strain that resolves light sensitivity, you know, because I don't know if you had light sensitivity issues, huh. all the concussions. Yeah. yeah. All I could do is after practice, go in, draw all the blinds, mm -hmm. and pop about 10 Vicodin at a time just to relieve that shit. And you know what that does to your stomach. And uh, have you done uh, any scans or any? No, oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, as it shows this big blurred, you know, and I saw it later, this big blurred mass. Oh, you go see the doctor and it says, have you ever had a concussion? Yeah. And there's the, no. the space is not big enough for yeah. the number. And, right. and what they never did was severity. I mean, because right. we know there's a bell ringer mm -hmm. and then there's lights out. And then how long is their lights out? And so, I mean, I wasn't even button heads with somebody on every play. You know, the NFL needs to own this. They need to stop running and being cowards. If they do not take a stand on cannabis, uh, then they will continue to prove that they care nothing more about uh, the NFL than how much money it is generating for them. <laughs> right on, man. It's healing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it is.